football. This is what, uh, you know, I expected from Chicago. I didn't think it was such a, a butt kicking. Um, but this is the championship team from last year and very experienced. And they played extremely hard and and I we couldn't combat anything. And I just think we went away from what we wanted to accomplish here and playing together as a team and um so it's you know disappointing but we still got one game and we go get to go home so um you know we'll look at the video and and hopefully do a better job and but our starters have, got, have to come we have to come and be ready sandy you talked before the game started about you know limiting their points in the paint obviously they finished with 60 tonight so um defensively what did you see from your team just as far as an inability to adjust to that goes yeah, I think it was a lot of it was our turnovers uh, for easy baskets. They're one of the best teams in the league in the open court and Copper certainly got them going there and miscommunication, not executing and helping. And, um, you know, it's, you know, when they have confidence like that and other people were scoring too, they're moving the ball easy. We we didn't provide enough resistance, but 60 points, I mean, you know, it'd be a long night if we let that happen again on uh, whenever we play on uh, Tuesday night. So, um we just got to be a little bit more resilient, taking care of the ball, the pressure that they felt on us. And then, and we really took a lot of bad decisions, like the quick shots was not happy with that. So you can't, we played right back into their hands. We got to be better. Hey coach. So do you, you spoke to the turnovers being like self-inflicted in a sense. And do you, do you guys find solace in that? And do you guys just generally feel more comfortable knowing that you had, you know, the home game coming up to kind of, you know, wrestling your laurels with? Yeah, I hope not. Um, look, you know, it'd been nice to, but it, Chicago responded way champion teams respond. Um, but our turnovers were just really silly, to be quite honest, and through a lack of ball movement. I, I, you know, I know I just didn't think we played together as a team. We got two one on one, and we're not built like them. They don't. We don't have a copo that can drive by anyone. But our one on one defense has to be better. We just allowed to players just drive right by us. So, but you know, we can be better. Um, and then it's just committed committing to that and you know, with our movement, making sure that we continue to play together. But it's like it's a series. Hey, I've been into this gym before and got my butts kicked. Um, but it's nice to to know we have, you know, we have one more game and hopefully we can bring a better effort and and hopefully the result will be positive. Sandy, um, around, I think, the five or six minutes left in the quarter, left in the game, you walked down the bench and and talked to your players. And it seemed like you were trying to, can you just tell me what, what you were talking to them about? Oh, man, I spoke to them a lot. But I think at that time, it's more like, you know, okay, we, le- we learn and we move on. You know, we got to, I, I'm, you know, I didn't go in there yelling at anyone. What's the purpose of that? You know, it, it's we've got one more game and we're on our home court. So it's more about, hey, we got to regroup and refocus and come ready to play. Obviously, we we weren't at our best tonight, but we're a better team than what we showed. But I think Chicago made us look like this tonight. So credit to them. They did what they're supposed to. Um, but it's nice to go home. And um, I think we can learn a lot from this. It's still a young group in a playoff format, knowing how to how to win these. This is a very experienced team over the other other side. So I, I think um, it's going to be a really wonderful experience anyway. But um, And we just have to regroup. So I was just probably just staying positive more than anything. And Michaela and Han, you both are very young in your careers. So, I mean, what do you take? What do you try to build off of a game like this? Um, kind of like what Coach Sandy said, um, they made adjustments and we, you know, didn't do so well in doing that. Um, and so just knowing that good teams will do, continue to do that. And like you said, um, we're young, but we can learn so much from that. And we're going to have to go um, be better in the next game on Tuesday. Um, hopefully, you know, bring this home. Going to Zoom, Chris Rim. Okay. So um Han says, you know, you know, during games like this, you know, as a young player, they need to work hard, play hard, and um, you know, also stay confident. You know, Coach Sandy gave us uh, give them a lot of confidence. So um it's up to them to, you know, believe in herself and uh, you know, play hard and um do their best. Now we'll go to Chris Zoom. Thanks. Uh, thanks. When uh when Khalid 
gets going like that in the way she did um, today, is that something that that you all prepared for? And and I guess how do you plan to kind of nullify that in game three? Yeah, I mean, we we prepare for everything. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't think so, but um, it look it, and like I said, I think our Kalia is a great shooter. I think right from the the tip off, we talked about you know offensive rebounds and no open threes, and we overhelped, and she shoots in a three, so it's more like oh here we go. Um, and then it was just our as our poor decision making with our turnovers, we allowed her to get into transition, and it was it's it's she, you no one can stop her regardless of who she's playing in the whole WNBA. Um, and she just did a good, great job getting there, but it doesn't take, it takes, we need to keep her in the half court. We need to keep her out of the restricted area. And that means we need good shot selection. We need to take care of the ball so we can put them in the half court a little more. Jackie Powell. Hey, Sandy. Um, you talked about how this is a very similar situation or rather familiar situation for you. It happened last year to your team in the finals. What does the process look like of responding better in the next game? And how do you motivate your team to come out with a better effort that includes some more pride to try to win that home game? Yeah, well, this is our last, you know, it's a do or die. We don't go home. I think that should be motivation in itself. Um, you know, these are the playoff series. They don't always go according to plan, but it's it's a, a wonderful to have a three games, you know, five games too, because it's just who makes the tweaks and, and has that, you know, executes on that day. Um, and that was Chicago today. Their activity, if they, that, that was a pretty impressive defensive effort. So you have to give credit where credit's due. That was impressive. Uh, their players and it, you know, they got really good bench contributions as well too. And, um, you know, for us, it's, we have one more game. We're going back home. We don't, we don't want to finish on that uh, kind of game. So we, we need to show our fight and we've, showed a lot of fight just to finish in August. We've had an up and down season. Uh, so it's an opportunity for us to grow. Yeah, we're still young, but you got to keep believing and and execute a little bit better. And the only way we can do that is by making sure we stay together. And that's critical. And I'll be stressing that, obviously, leading into the next game. And Michaela, uh, for you, what message do you have to the Liberty fans about what to expect from you all during that game three at Barclays? Um, that we're going to fight. You know, we have to, like Coach Sandy said, it's kind of do or die. Um, this is our season that we're fighting for. It's our season's on the line. And so, you know, get ready for obviously a really great game. Um, not this, you know, obviously this was a disappointing loss, um, but a really great game. Uh, we need the energy from the Liberty fans. They've been great all year. Um, they've been able to support us and we really appreciate you all. So we're excited for Tuesday. Come out and hopefully get that win. Thank you all. Thank you. Brian Florentin. Hi, everybody. Um, Michaela, throughout the year, after the team had rough losses, they were able to bounce back and really, um, is my sound coming again okay? Yep. Okay. Um, throughout, throughout the year, you guys have had tough losses and bounced back and really been able to have that fight and that energy to sort of correct course pretty quickly. What do you think will be the key to getting back to how you guys usually play on Tuesday? Uh, I think for one, looking at ourselves, um, Chicago exploited us in a, in a few ways, but mostly just being tough. Um, we we didn't re respond well in that in that aspect, and that was kind of the most disappointing part, is we knew we were gonna, they were going to come out hard. We knew that they you know they had their season on the line, and we kind of faltered to that pressure. And so, looking at ourselves first, I think is the first thing we need to start with. Um, continuing to play together and continue to know that this is our this is our season that's on the line. So, you know, I believe wholeheartedly that we will respond better than we did today. Um, yeah, Tuesday will be better for us. All right. Thanks. And Sandy, throughout the year, you've mentioned that you wanted the team to just play with pace, but also not rush the offense. Do you think that the team started to put extra pressure on themselves after the slow start in Chicago built up that lead? And I guess for Tuesday, how do you sort of encourage them to just take their time and complete the scout and run the offense as they normally do? Is it for me? Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think just what you said, we have to get up to a better start. we got to execute the scout. Uh, but we're always built around playing selfless basketball ball player movement, and we didn't do that today. Uh, they were getting into denials and reversals, and we didn't do the little things well about cutting just to create openings for other players. So we just got to get back to what our identity is and doing the little things harder and better and committing to that um, 
shooting when you're open, being confident in that, but not forcing the action that we're playing straight into their hands because the pace really worked in the first game. The pace didn't work in this game because they obviously outran us all night long. Thank you, Des. Miles. Hey, uh, Mick, I wanted to ask you about the crowd for Tuesday, because despite the lopsided score today, you did earn a split in the in the series and head back home with a chance to keep the season alive. What environment are you anticipating at Barclays on Tuesday night for the Liberty's first ever home playoff game in Brooklyn? Oh, I think the, the fans will be, you know, show up for us. I know they did in the last um, regular season game. I know there was almost like 8,000 people, and that's good, you know, for women's basketball in general. Um, having people really support and invest in women's basketball is super important. And I know that, you know, they're rooting for us, and they're going to come out and show us um, just kind of what they've been showing us all year. And hopefully we deliver for, you know, the people who've been supporting us all year as well. And Sandy, I wanted to ask you about the pressure that the guards faced from and what Chicago did differently on the traps from game one into game two with uh, with the second actions, with the players that were coming off of those uh, on those on those passes out of the doubles. Yeah, I mean, firstly, they missed them. They changed the matchup and they put Copper on sub. So that was a yeah, a good, good change up for them, putting the pressure there and. Uh, that would have, you know, meant with B could have had, uh, you know, a quickly on that out and we didn't exploit it probably as best as we should. And they were blowing it up. They competed really hard. Um, but, you know, there's things we can do. There's We've got to play with a little bit more poise, but also urgency. So it's a, it's a fine balance between the two. And, you know, the stuff we talk about all season long, just the good to great. So uh, we got to find, we got to find better ways and, and better spacing and and hopefully exploit them and then just keep them out of transition as much as we can. Thanks, Sandy. And Han, having seen the level Chicago lifted their game to effort-wise today, how do you adjust to match their aggression and intensity on Tuesday night? So Han said, so Han said next game we all come out be mad and um also we gotta you know show up with more energy and more aggression as well. And just like Coach Sandy said, you know, we know they're the championship team, but you know, so what we still gotta come out and compete. And uh, you know, she believes in us and she believes that you know we're gonna get the win. Thank you all. Safe travels home. Thanks. One more. Oh, okay. Jeff Magliocchetti. Uh, Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry things didn't go your way today. My two questions are for Coach. I wanted to first ask about the performances of Jocelyn Willoughby and Dee Dee Richards today, particularly the impact Dee Dee had in the latter stages of the second quarter. Yeah, no, I was happy. You know, obviously Dee Dee hasn't had many opportunities to end the season here and uh, but she's been a great teammate and always stayed ready, um, and that's what you need. And we we were struggling everywhere, so it was a, you know, I was happy that I could get her in there and get her some minutes. And she was really productive for us. She's a big guard. She plays great defense. She was being disruptive. Um, you know, she had like eight points here, and and it made it hard for her opposing player here. So, and Joss, the same thing. You know, just brought us a lot of energy, and I think that was uh, beneficial for us. But. Um, you know, we, we, you know, that means we can't, we just need our starters to, to set us off a little bit and hopefully um, we can build up from that. For sure. And over that final 426 of the second quarter, you, you outscored Chicago 9-2, kind of kept them off a little bit. So what was the difference in that little stretch? What were you guys doing right? And what can you carry over to Tuesday's, Tuesday's contest? Well, you know, I was just challenging them to play the right way, you know, um, just take, we were shooting terrible shots at one stage and missing them or uh, playing right into their hands. So it's just having a little bit of poise and patience and moving them around a little bit. And, um, you know, they're hedging, they're trapping, they're hedge switching. You know, you just got to have patience and find the gaps out of the movement and then trying to keep them, you know, once we could have better execution, we could keep them out, um, you know, out of, out of the transition phase and that's it. I mean, it's a game of runs, but obviously they had the most of the run. I think we played probably, Five minutes of good basketball. So, but you know, it's playoff basketball. We have, we still have one more game. So, we may the best team win. Absolutely. Appreciate your time and insight, all three of you. See you guys Tuesday. Good luck.
Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Do you want to take him now? Yeah, well, now. <laughs>